All right, well, let's get hungry for the word here. So, ready to represent. I'm going to try to wrap up this tonight as best as I can. There might be some loose ends, but we're just going to go where the Holy Spirit wants to go. I'd like to start with something new and fresh when we move to our location. Please let everybody know. If, you don't, uh, if you've not been to our website, come to our, uh, go to our website, redemptionmobile.org. And if you're watching this right now via the Internet, you have probably found it. Or our, like us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. And uh, as we start bringing forth the announcements, because we're really excited about this new move, uh, as we post things, share them. Get the word out. This is a good work that God is doing here. Amen. And uh, for all those who's been around from the beginning, how many people would rec recommend coming to Redemption Mobile? Yeah. Amen. I would too. Hallelujah. So get the, get the word out that we're kingdom-minded. We want to build people and build the kingdom. I should have got amen. That was a great place to amen. Right there. Right there it was. Amen. And so we want to get the word out that there's something going on here. And it's not flesh. It's of the Spirit. Because we want to build people and we want to build kingdom. Redemption Mobile. Thank you, Jesus, for that. That was his mandate. So, we went through recognizing. Because recognizing releases reward and honor accesses it. So you have to recognize or receive a person before the reward can be released. Mm. But then you have to give honor unto them in order to access it. So recognizing releases honor accesses. <clears throat> and so we moved from there and we started talking about being an ambassador or a representative. And uh, we, we started seeing one side of recognizing and honoring. And then we started shifting to being recognized and being honored. Because along the way, there is going to be a little bit of a shift. I mean, you never stop honoring and recognizing. I'm sorry, that's never going to happen. You, will, you are not on his throne. Hello. So you're always, there's always going to be upward. Everything, there's always going to be upward. Uh, even Paul says, he said, I ain't, in, in Philippians, he said, I ain't obtained. In other words, let's translate that today. I ain't there yet. I've left. Glory to God, I ain't arrived, but I've left. So there's a lot of us that have left, will never arrive, but you always need to press forward. So we're always going to be honoring and recognizing. But along the way, you start becoming recognized and you start becoming honored. And that's for the sake of leadership. But the world would have leadership, as Jesus says, to lord over people. But my Bible says that the King of kings and the Lord of lords come not to serve, not to be served, but to serve. And so leadership is servant leadership. I said it's servant leadership. That's the angle in the kingdom, that the greater you want to be, the more you're going to serve. Well, I want to be top. I want to be top dog. Well, you better be the most servant. Amen. Thank you. And so we, we started learning about that. And we had to hit that angle because before we got into really honoring, if we didn't lay that foundation, because a lot of people, I even see it in marriages, where it's like my wife usually say, well, well, he's my king. And some women will put the hands on their hips and do the little head shake and be like, uh-uh. But yet the reason she can say that is because I can equivocally say that she's my queen. Amen. That she honors and respects me because I love her as Christ loved the church. And she, tr listen, 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 guys, she trusts me. That's what it's all about. She's not afraid to give me her whole heart because she trusts me. Why? Because I've already laid mine out to her. It's hers. My heart's hers. My cars are hers. <laughs> Bank account's hers. Even sometimes, y'all, I'm going to just tell on her. Sometimes I'll have my cold glass of milk, and all of a sudden I'll look, and it got, it got took up. She grabbed it, and it's hers. So I can't even have my own cup of milk. That was a point to laugh, laugh. <laughs> that meant to be funny. But I have totally given myself to her, therefore she can trust me. And so that's how it is as being a servant leader. You have people that will follow you or be with you when they know, listen, they know you. When they know your, it's what we call credibility. You may not hear that in the corporate world. You have built credibility, okay? Amen. And so we started talking about that, but here's where we were last week. There is an apprenticeship before there is leadership. Right. 
And you right. don't hear that very often today. And this microwave miracle, shake and bake faith, this name it and claim it, drive through, breakthrough kind of thing, yes. we don't want to go to seed time and harvest. Look, God is God. And yes, depending on the situation and depending on your faith, there can be instantaneous miracles. The tumor was there. Whoa! Glory to God. After the worship music started praising, where would it go? Boom. Pow. Ping. But let's don't Hollywoodize stuff because a lot of times we are so much looking for the, the, the spectacular that we miss the supernatural. And God wants to take us through a process because through the process is where you start growing because there is an apprenticeship before there is leadership. And listen, sometimes you can be in a tough place and you think that, well, God must be doing so I must not be doing something right because I'm in this tough no no look you're you're not in that tough place because you're not good you are because you are oh good God almighty I'm about to take off running it's because you are good because any time that God has a good seed you got to plant that seed and any time you plant anything you always plant it in a dark place there's a dark place sometimes in our life that the Satan didn't come along and try to put you there and so quit trying to bind this and bind that. Sometimes God says you are good seed. you got to go through the growth, so I'm going to plant you. And any time it's planted, you're planting a seed, an apple seed. you got to place it in the ground. You place it in a dark place. When a man and woman want to have a child, what do they do? They plant seed. That seed goes into a dark place. Always... A dark place when the Lord wants to plant you. But He doesn't plant you there because you're not good. He plants you there because you are good. I know that goes sideways and contrary to some camps. Look, we're just as charismatic and Pentecostal. We believe the goodness of God with all of our heart. But I'm telling you, when God wants to do a work in you, He will plant you in a dark place because He wants to have fruit with you and He wants you to bloom. He wants it to germinate. He wants you to pop out of that shell. Hallelujah. As my apostle said one time, and we bore witness to this too, that if, that if somebody wants to come along and yoke up with you, the scripture says that unless a wheat fall to the ground and die, it bides alone. That's right. And so what happens is that, is that we're like seeds too a lot in this aspect that when somebody comes along and it's like, oh yeah, well I can help you do this, I can help you do that. Or maybe it's, maybe you're single. Maybe they're coming along and trying to throw in lines like, yeah baby. We got to hook up. Mm -hmm. We got to go out. Yeah, you fine, mama. You fine. And everything like that. Well, look, what you do is that when you resist, I'm starting to preach already and I hadn't even make it through my introduction. Lord, have mercy. Help you guys. What happens is that if you resist that seed, if you resist that person, what's really on the inside, come on now, what's really on the inside is going to come out. And then when that happens, when you resist the seed and you're like, uh, no, thank you. Are they still going to pursue you? Yeah. Are, are they going to still have a good attitude toward you? Or did they not get what they wanted out of the deal? So they're miffed now. Yeah. Well, I thought I would get to do this or I would get to do that. Or that we could hook up here. We could hook up there. And, you know, this just wasn't, I'm sorry, but this just wasn't what I expected. And when you let that seed fall and it starts dying, what's really on the inside will come out. And then, you, then you get to judge. Come on now. Whether that's really for you or whether they're really for you or not. Amen. Amen. And so in that servantship, there's a time of growth. Because it's servant leadership. A servant leader. So growing up is a part of the process before you can enter into a transitional season of being recognized. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. And so before you can enter into that transitional season of being recognized or being honored or put into leadership, there is a requirement in the kingdom, and that is maturity. Let me repeat, just in case anybody missed that. Maturity is not an option, it's a requirement. Amen. And so we were looking at some scriptures last week. Uh, we looked at Luke chapter 2, 52, and how Jesus was growing up in front of the people. Then we went to 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3, 6, and 10, and talks about 
uh, not putting somebody in the bishopric that's uh, a novice. And, and that they must be proven. And then in chapter, the same book, in chapter 5, verse 22, it talks about uh, not laying hands on somebody suddenly. Amen. So we were proving over and over and over again that there is this system of growth and maturity in the kingdom. Before we move into the last phase of, 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 of this, I, I want to hit one or two scriptures. Um, I've got about... I've got about five or six left, but I can't do it and get everything else in. Just time will not permit. Um, so I want to go to some of the main ones. So let's head to Hebrews chapter 5. And we're going to finish that thought. And for all those that uh, are joining us tonight, and maybe for all those for the first time online, uh, go back to our archives. And uh, we have those past messages recorded for you so you can catch up. Uh, with us and be on the same page. Amen. But right now we're heading to Hebrews chapter 5. Amen. Now we're going to start reading in verse 12. Remember, the thought is, is about growing. There's a process. Before there's leadership, there's apprenticeship. You've got to have growth and maturity. For when the time you ought to be teachers, uh-oh, you ought to be. In other words, you've been sitting under the Word of God for far too long. You look like you're looking. Let me break it down to you. It's okay, little baby, when you're two or three years old and you say, Mama, I want some milk. She's going to say, hold on, baby. And they're going to go to the, the refrigerator, going to open it up, going to put something in the sippy cup, and you're going to bring it back to baby girl. But what happens is, is that there's a problem when baby girl's seven years old in front of the TV and all of a sudden, a li- with a little bit of smart kind of attitude, Mama, I want some milk! <laughs> the problem is, is when Mama goes and gets that milk out of the refrigerator, there should be a point in time when Mama said, hey, you got two legs and two arms, and you know where the fridge is. I worked all week long, and I put that milk in the fridge, and you can get you some out. Come on, somebody help me out tonight. Amen. And so when you ought, for, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. Oh, mercy. I promise I'm not mad. But this is where the rubber meets the road a lot of times when you have come along a little bit. When you think that you can run with the big dogs so you leave the porch. And you find out you ain't all that you thought you were. And a lot of times, especially in ministry, this happens in business too, guys. Any, listen, anytime I'm telling you kingdom principles or kingdom keys, this is applicable to wherever you're at. I am in the world of ministry, but a principle will go across the board. Whether you're a beautician, whether you're a barber, whether you're a, a construction worker, whether you're in accounting, whether you're a police officer, it does not matter your vocation. The kingdom principles and keys work for anywhere, anytime. A man. Yes, they do. Where was I at? Yes. And so, uh, especially like uh, uh, in ministry, when somebody gets a hold of something, they're doing good, they got a few words, they know how to go, they know how to flow, and sometimes they'll go on their own. And I love, I love what Bishop, Bishop Jake said one time. It really resonated with me because he was talking about the subject uh, some years ago. And he says, we got an epidemic in our country where in the church we've got babies that are birthing babies that are birthing babies that are birthing babies. And they go out and they start something. They got a few followers. They do something. Maybe sometimes they swim. Sometimes they sink. It never really explodes or expands. It kind of hangs around. But then that's enough to reproduce a baby. To re- because you, cause begot produces begot. In other words, you are, whatever you are is what you're going to produce. Everything produces after its own kind. And so what happens is, is they, a lot of times what happens is they go out and they thought, man. What in the world's going on? When I was over here, things were rocking and rolling. Now there ain't nothing rocking and there ain't nothing rolling. What's going on? It's because you didn't realize the anointing that you were under. 
It wasn't you. It was that man or woman of God that's been doing it for 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Faithfully, they know something. They've learned something. They prayed for you. Come on now. Laid their hands on you. And you're operating within the anointing of a sent one. Oh, good God. I know. Somebody who's sent, not just somebody who's... You can be called for years. And a calling means that God has gifted you. And the giftings and callings of God are without repentance. Okay, we know that. But you see, a calling and a gifting will move people. Well, hallelujah. You can go out. You can get a little action going on. Because your gift is of God. And it can move people. But it's not until you're sent... Because when you're sent, the anointing comes. And the anointing changes people. Your gift will move people, but the anointing will change people. And a lot of times you get it mixed up. Because when you're called, you could be called for years before you're sent. Amen. And a lot of people go prematurely. They, in other words, they come out of the incubator. And they can't survive. The life support's gone because their life support was underneath the covering that they were under. And so, <laughs> but they were gifted and they're still gifted and they're still called, but they need to come up under long enough and be raised up enough until they're well, sent. Mm -hmm. Yes, roots. Amen. We talked about that last week. Don't be a tumbleweed. Yes. Be a seed. Don't just roll around church to church, place to place. Go where God sends you. Go where you're sent and stay where you're stationed. And God will rear you up. And, amen. And this, like I said, this is, look, you could be in the tire business. You could love tires. Tires is your thing. You love tires. And you're working under somebody for 10 or 15 years. And it's because, you know what? You might love tires, but you don't know how. Think about setting up a, a scheduling spreadsheet for the employees. You might love tires, but you don't know nothing about marketing. You might love tires, but you have no idea where you're supposed to be, and you have no idea about the demographics in your area. Yeah. It's hard to snail, sell snow cones in Alaska. Right. Do you feel me? Yeah. In other words, do you even know where you're supposed to be, and when you're supposed to be there, do you even know the people that are around you? Right. You've got to know these things. I, I see it in, all the time where you've got even Asian people that live in a predominantly black community and they sell black hair care products. Right. Why are you saying that? Because they know where they live, they know the demographics, and this is what's going to sell. Because if they try to sell everything else but they're living in that community, it's not going to work, y'all. Yeah. That's right. It's not going to work. You've got to know your community. You've got to know the demographics. Who are you selling to? Yeah. Who's out there? See, it's applicable. Oh, my yeah. Lord. But when you get up under people that have been doing it for years and you take that apprenticeship and you learn and you grow, then all of a sudden it's not just about, I'm gifted and called, but you're learning and growing things that you probably have never thought of along the way. That when you finally do step into it, you realize, oh Lord, you mean the bank wants me to have a five-page business plan? Well, I just thought I'd get the loan and, you know, start ordering products and stock on the shelf. No, they ain't going to give you a dime until they know your business plan. What's your projections for the next six months? What do you mean projections? Uh-huh. So, so what do you, what, what are interest on return? In other words, what is the, uh, not only the duration of the loan and not only the, uh, the APR and everything else, but they're going to expect a little bit on, maybe on the front end too. What's the terms and conditions? Oh, about that. Well, what's your, uh, you know, if you're getting into ministry, what's your government like? What's your constitution and bylaws? Well, I just love Jesus and I know the word. <laughs> There's so much more to it. Oh, <sighs> But you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Teach you again the principles. You know, I think, was it, uh, help me out here if I'm wrong, but I think it was, was it Bear Bryant that, that no matter how many years he coached the first day, he would always go out to the, the people and he'd hold up a football and say, this is a football. <laughs> am I wrong or am I right? Somebody help me out here. Amen. Okay, amen, because if this is going out to a lot of people in a lot of places, I want to make sure I'm right on my facts. Well, why would that be? Why would one of the greatest coaches of all time come out on the first day and say, this is a football? Because it's the basic principles you never leave. 
you never leave the basic principles. If you get the basic, in other words, if you get the foundation wrong, you're in trouble. A hurricane can come through, knock out your windows, your plumbing be shot, you got your roof halfway torn out. You got to have a team to come in to get all the water out and everything. But they will allow you to stay in that house. But if there's a crack in your foundation, they will condemn the home. And you can't even go back into your own home. The foundation is foundational. Ooh. You've got to, you got to know your foundation. Amen. The first principles are the oracles of God and, uh, and are become such as have need of milk and not a strong meat. You ever saw a little child try to chew on a piece of meat or something that they can't, they ain't ready to chew on, but they wanted it, so you go ahead and give them something? You ever saw that? They don't even know what to do with it. They might like the way it tastes. Gumming it. Oh, they would want it. They'd like to have it, but they just sit there gumming it. How many happy people have you met in your lifetime? Maybe you've been one where you try to bite off more than you could chew, so to speak, and you just sat in your life and you started gumming something yeah. because it was the wrong timing. Yeah. It wasn't the wrong calling. It wasn't the wrong anything else, but the timing might have been off. And so you weren't ready yet, so you sit there and gum it. A razor in the hands of a three-year-old boy is a curse. Yeah. But a razor in the hands of a 30-year-old man is a blessing. That's right. There's nothing wrong with that razor. It all depends on whose hands it's in. That's right. Because it's a curse to a 3-year-old, but it's a blessing. Well, let me speak it another way. You ain't going to give your car keys to the 6-year-old just because they like to get behind the wheel and play driving. <laughs> you got to wait till they get older before they can drive it. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful and the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Don't be coming all up in here and you got milk all over you and saying, yeah, I want to tackle this, Brother Bobby. Look, man, just sit in that high chair and drink that milk. You grow, you will grow, you will grow. Amen. But strong meat belongs to them that are of, oh, I'm going to meddle here. Y'all, I probably won't even get to where I was wanting to go tonight. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. In other words, they are complete. They are mature. It belongs to them that are mature. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So exercise, use, use, exercise. How in the world do you move? Jesus said, he said when his disciples come back and uh, he was at the lady at the well and they went off to get something, he come back, he wasn't hungry no more. They say, what in the world is going on? He says, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. And it went on to say, because I was going to do the will of my Father who sent me. So we know that strong meat is being used. Milk is learning, growing, taking notes, being under somebody, watching this, watching that, being observant, going here, going there, training, everything else. And you grow along the way. And yes, you will get to do along the way, but strong meat is for those who are out there doing it. I'm telling you, I am preaching something in here tonight. Oh, my God, I wish this place was totally packed out. Because a lot of times that we think we got a handle on things and we really don't, and it's just pride, it's just self-centeredness and everything else. Because all of us want to, to be great at something, at least most everybody I run into, if you don't want to be great, I, don't, I can't relate to you. I love you, I do, I do, I love you. I can't relate to you. I want to be excellent in things. I want to be really good at something. Amen, because that's how he is. Because <laughs> everything that God made, he said, that is good. Amen. That is good. It was good. It was good. And it should be good. Matter of fact, it says to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So there's stages even in that, y'all. Yes. Glory be to God. So being, so reason of use and being exercised is what meat is. There's one thing of learning it. There's another thing that's doing it. 
There's just complete, uh, the, one thing going back to the driving thing. It's one thing to sit in class for months on end and listen to somebody talking about driver's ed. This road sign, that road sign. You took notes. Everything else. You passed your te written test. Glory to God. Hey, y'all, just a side note. That written test is hard. <laughs> I'm just saying it was hard. For me, it was hard. Okay, maybe I didn't pay enough attention. But there's a difference between taking that test and knowing them signs and for the first time in your life sitting in that seat and turning the ignition on. Yeah. All of a sudden there's things that they did not teach you that are going through your mind that you don't know have a clue what is going on here. I have never done this. There's things they can't even teach you. Things that only come by experience. Some things have to be caught. They just can't be taught. Sometimes God wants to get you and wants you to get it. Matter of fact, I'll just give you a story. There was one time when I was doing prison ministry, and this was when I was a young buck. And I was an ordained minister and senior pastor of a church, so I'm going to go up in here and I'm going to get somebody saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we did have favor in this prison, and we were allowed, with the group that I was with, we were allowed to go in some places that others were not, okay? So I got to be in some areas where I found myself in the middle uh, they know guards around, and they hold a bunch of prisoners. And things were cool for the first five minutes. And then all of a sudden, I don't even know what his name is. He's crazy. And he come up, and he said, are you a preacher, ma'am? I said, yes, I am. He says, well, I'm God. <laughs> now, now, look, now, he's serious. He's that off. And this is before I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so I don't have a clue about laying hands and casting out devils or nothing else. I'm just sitting here like, huh? I never nobody even told me nothing about this. I've never seen anybody handle this kind of situation. What in the world? So here I am trying to reason with the crazy guy. Trying to reason with somebody like that is trying to explain to your three-year-old what a Roth IRA is. <laughs> You might like what you say, and you might like to hear yourself talk, but basically you're Charlie Brown's teacher at that time. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> and so here I am surrounded, and here's the thing. Here's how the enemy works. That created enough of an illusion. I mean, uh, uh, well, well, yeah, it kind of was an illusion to me. It, it, enough of a distraction, let's say, to where there were some people that were hating on me, but they didn't have the right time and place to all of a sudden come in because I, through my talking, I was trying to, you know, say, no, I was refuting what he was saying and trying to intelligently explain a few things to him. Well, that was just enough that some other people use that. Just, just enough. People will twist things. And, just enough that they, that they come over and they started defending him. They had, could care less about his point of view. They were wanting to get to me. And they were using that as a vehicle to come into me. So I found myself surrounded by a bunch of haters and you know what? I can hold my own, but no, they seven or eight other people wanting to throw me out, throw me down. I couldn't stood a chance. I might have dotted an eye, bled a nose, but it wouldn't have been long, and I'd have, it, it wouldn't have been long. Okay. And luckily, there was there was one there was a believer there who had been to a lot of the services that we went to that kind of come in, took my defense lightly, kind of moved me on to the side. And you know what? I look back on that and I was like, nobody ever prepared me for that. And the Lord goes, I know. You ready to come back down a little bit? I said, yes, sir. You were getting a little bit too haughty in yourself. He said, how did that ordination paper help you in there? Not one single bit. No, I'm not downing it, especially if it's from a credible source. It's an honor, okay? So I'm not dissing it. But... <laughs> There's an experience. Strong meat is for those who have used for, with experience. Amen. Now, I'm going to have to fly through this next part. So I need to get you guys out of here. Amen. I receive that. But unfortunately, we have rented this place for a time limit. So we need to honor our agreement. So be praying for a building, amen. We're moving into a larger location, but be praying that we're going to have lands and buildings, amen. So here's what I want to say. So listen up. I've got to fly through this. I'm going to try not to preach it. But God wants you to be exalted. He does. And look, leadership, especially servant leadership, is not 
a platform of prestige, it's a place of service. And he wants you to be exalted. He just doesn't want you to be the one who's doing it. He wants you. Why? Because when you start getting elevation, he starts getting glorification. Glory be to God. So the more you grow in him, the more you start looking like him, sounding like him, reacting like him, thinking like him, the more of him that is shown and the less of you that's shown, the more he wants to raise you up. Why? Because people are seeing him and they're not seeing you anymore. And the less that they can see of you, the more he's going to push you higher and higher and higher and higher. Glory be to God. Matthew 23. I've got to give you some scriptures on that and then we're going to try to shut this thing down. So, Daniel, if you could come back up, sir, and as we start to close this, Matthew 23, 12, it says, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased or shall be brought low. So what happens when you try to do it? What happens when you've got a, a little bit of a, a wild hair or you got just a little bit of an itch to do this or itch to do that, and all of a sudden you start stepping out on stuff. What happens? You get abased. Yeah. But he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Amen. That's the last stage before you start being honored more and more and more is that you start humbling yourself more and more and more. And humility is not putting yourself down. That's of the devil. Let's go ahead and take care of that. He'll come to you and he'll tell you everything that you've ever done wrong. And if you'll listen to him, he'll tell you even more stuff that wasn't true and try to get you to believe it. So humbling yourself is not putting yourself down. Humbling yourself is just trying to raise others up. Amen. You're not putting yourself down to, to literally talk bad about yourself because if you're a child of God, you are in the image of God. You are, you are His. Hallelujah. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So humbling yourself is not putting yourself down. Humbling yourself is lifting others and lifting God up. When you can come down to a low place to know that you are God and I am not, and you can start lifting him higher and higher and higher. When you humble yourself to lift him higher, you know what he's going to do? He's going to come and he's going to lift you up. And he said, come here. I see more of me in you every day. Come on up here. Come on up here. Isn't that what it says in Scripture that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ? Why did he say, I was on the, in the Spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice from heaven that said, come on up here. Because he wants you to be exalted. He just doesn't want you to do it. Now Psalm 75, verse 6, is, six and 7, we don't have enough time to turn there, says that God is the one that promotes. It's God that does it. Oh, Jesus, I can mm, feel like screaming this out right now, but I've not got the time. Don't you be intimidated by the fact that what you God has said is yours. Somebody is stepping into it because if it's yours, it's going to be yours. You just might need to grow up a little bit. But it's yours. Don't get intimidated with the Lord. Don't, remember, this is not about you having a, 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 a you thinking something on your own, taking it, and mulling over it to the point where now you even believe what God said, but He didn't say. It. Now, I'm talking about what you have heard Him tell you. Write the vision. Make it plain. It will not tarry. Though it tarry, wait on it, for it shall surely come. Because even though David was out in the field. Oh, glory to God, I'm about to run a lap and throw a shoe. <laughs> Even though David was out in the field and the prophet of God was in his own house and there was one brother that come by and the prophet of God said, nope, that's not it. And then another brother come along, the prophet of God said, nope, that's not them either. 
And if you're insecure and you're immature in the Lord, you can see all these things happening. You are, like we said, on the front end of this thing during worship. You're walking by sight, not by faith. You're not going on what he said. You're getting intimidated and you're getting in, in a position where you're starting to get in doubt and unbelief. But God said, you're the man. You're going to do it. But yet now you see another brother stepping in. And then you see another one. And then another one. And then another one. But I'm here to tell you, until David stepped into the house, hallelujah, the oil did not flow. But when David stepped into the house, the oil began to flow from the horn. The prophet of God anointed him king of all over Israel. And he was the king that the promised Messiah was going to come through. The king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's a great place to shout hallelujah. Praise God. Until you step into your place, the oil's not going to flow. I don't care who they are. I don't care what they've done. I don't care what they've said. I don't care what kind of resume. I don't care what kind of credentials. I don't care what it looks like. If God said it, you can take it to the bank, baby, and the oil will not flow until you step into your place. So if you want to, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You've got to grow before the oil will flow. Because even though he was out in that field, he wasn't just mamby and pamby. Him and the Lord, well, they were getting tight. And the Lord could trust him. Because when you grow, the reason it starts to flow when you grow is because now the Lord says, I can trust you with what's mine. So come on in. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for this time that we've had tonight. Thank you that if there's anybody in here, Lord, that's... Lord, that's hurting because maybe things didn't work out quite the way they thought. Lord, help them to see that in your eyes that they're good seed. They're being planted so they can grow. And that as they grow, they will blossom and flourish. And if they put down roots in you, Lord, let the water of the Holy Spirit and the Son of the Almighty God beam down on them, Lord, that there will be a harvest. There is a day coming. The oil is going to flow as they grow. May they receive it tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the work that you're doing here. Thank you for the thousands that are in attendance and the millions watching around the world. I'll call things that be not as though they were. That this word of the kingdom, the goodness of God, thank you, will go out. It will go out. We will take the glory of God out. So many people, Lord, are praying for the glory to come in. Lord, I'm praying that we can get the glory out. We can get it out, Lord. Signs, wonders, miracles, healings, deliverances, salvations. May they all be done in your precious Son's name. Not just inside the four square buildings of Redemption Mobile. For your church is your people, Lord. Thank you. 